are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to a very exciting episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And man, this was a little bit of a surprise, even for me, but this episode is about to get a whole lot memorable, mainly because I am not doing this alone. Who I have here with me is actually a very, very special guest star, and I'm sure for many of you, this will be someone who is actually pretty nostalgic. This is uh, an actor who has been working on several different projects, rather it be for, um, for voiceovers or even for live action and stuff like that. But you may probably remember this person the most back when he was a kid, when he provided the voice of D.W. from Arthur between Season 7 and Season 10. So, without further ado, I would like to welcome to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, the one and only, Jason Schwimmer. Jason, how are you today? I'm great. Wow. Thank you so much for the for the warm intro. I feel super welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I, I try to do my best to make everyone feel welcome here. So... Um, <laughs> so I, I'm sure that lately you have a brand new project that you've been pre pretty, uh, busy with. Yes. I, um, I just wanted to take a second if you don't mind. I, I, uh, so I'm new to the content creator space. Uh, for, for those of you who haven't heard of me, you've probably heard of, uh, DW on Arthur. So I was, as Matt was saying in the intro, I was the voice of DW from season seven to 10 of the show Arthur, believe it or not. And um, I'm decided I'm doing a, I wanna do a podcast all about that experience. Uh, I've been working on the show for a little over a year and I gotta say, Matt, I don't know how you stay on top of pop culture and, and what's going on in the world at the <laughs> level that you're at. I mean, it's been totally, like it's rocked my world. I am completely in, in a bubble, I am under a rock. I've, this is the least, I've ever kept up with pop culture and in my whole life. And so I really tip my hat to you for the, for the amounts of stuff you put out. I mean, it's, it's wild. I don't know how you do it. Thank you. It, it, it's very much hard work, but eventually you do get there. Even for me, it's something that, that would take me years. But we still got a major show that we got to get into, and uh, I'm glad that you're going to be joining me on this. So, Jason, I would like to ask you, are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Oh, God, I hope so. All right. And the chat wall, I would like to go and ask you all... Are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Let me hear it, folks. Are you all set and prepared? Yes, yes, we are seeing some comments that people are ready. That is perfect to hear. And so, without further ado, it is time now that we go ahead and get things started. And why we are all here today, and especially why you are here, Jason, is because we want to talk about your brand new podcast that you have uh, just recently released, which is Finding DW. So uh, can you explain to the audience uh, what this show is all about? Yeah, yeah. So uh, like I was saying a bit before, I was the voice of DW from season seven to 10 of the show Arthur. And um, for years now, I've known that DW, the little sister character on Arthur, has only been played by male voice actors. And, and, and for years, I've always had in the back of my mind the idea that wouldn't it be fun to, to track those guys down and talk to them about their experience? Because it's been such a, a big thing in my life where, you know, I, I'm not the type to go around uh, – or I haven't been until I started working on this podcast, go around and, and tell people about it. I usually just wait for people to find out. But it's been this big, exciting thing that happens where if I meet somebody and then they find out I was DW, it like blows their mind. And uh, so it's been like a, an interesting thing to navigate, uh, having played this super popular character, but now being so far removed from it. So my goal with it 
with the podcast is I want to track down and interview those other guys, these seven other voice actors about their experience and also, uh, you know, have a cathartic experience. See if I can uh, grow up from it because, you know, not in a self-deprecating way. I, I, I sincerely wonder, you know, when I was the voice of DW at 10, uh, whether or not I peaked. You know, will I ever do anything more significant in in the creative space? I don't know, and I want to try to find out. Yeah, and um, you do bring up the the notion of how all the other voice actors of DW were played by boys. Uh, did you figure out, or have you discovered why is that specifically? Like, why is it that like not it, like why is it someone like you would voice DW and not like a little girl? Yeah, so um, in episode two of my podcast, I spoke to the casting and voice director uh, who directed me uh, when I was uh, on Arthur. In fact, uh, she was the voice director from the beginning of Arthur all the way through, uh, like for every episode. And so we, I asked her, you know, why wh exactly that? And she talked about how um, there's, a, there's a certain quality that they wanted DW's voice to have, a, a roughness or, or a gruffness, uh, something to do with what they were kind of, how they envisioned the character from the start. Uh, and the first guy they cast was a, a talented actor named Michael Callows, who's no longer an actor, uh, but I've spoken to too. And, um, you know, because he did such a fantastic job with the character, um, every other person that they cast after, you know, he was no longer able to play the role, um, they just chose to go with a, a guy because they found that that it was difficult for them to find female voice actors whose voices matched his performance. And, and that's really the reason. It's pretty simple. OK, I see. Like, it, it's basically one that really set the standard and then just go from there. Yeah, uh, I think that they really tried hard to to keep it as similar sounding as possible. Yeah, and um, considering that, like now that you are on this hunt to go and find like all the other DWs, uh, has there been like any other actor that you still stayed in touch ever since you voiced DW? That's a good question. Um, there is only one person who comes to mind. So when I when I was a voice actor, you know, it really felt like this after school activity. I mean, I was 10 years old and sometimes I would play soccer after school and other times I would just, you know, go to the studio and act. It was this fun thing that I did and, and, and nothing more. I didn't I didn't think of it as this craft. I really you know, it was just this fun thing I got to do as, as a kid. And uh, there was one other kid along with me who was, you know, more professional, more established in the industry. Uh, who, uh, you know, we're still sort of in the same circles. Uh, he's also from Montreal, like yourself and like I am. And um, but other than that, no, I, I, I really in my adult, my adult life is very much removed from that time. And so it's been a very interesting experience for me to to dive back into that time and try to reconnect with people, uh, you know, from that from my former life. Uh, are you still acting to this day or like did you stop uh, momentarily to pursue a different life? I, I have stopped. I, I mean, I'm still I'm still a member of the union if I choose to be uh, uh. of Actra. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'd love to get back into it. But, you know, to be honest, uh, I you know, I when I stopped playing DW, I was sort of lost. But I knew I wanted to have as many, you know, quote unquote, normal experiences as possible. I wanted to finish high school. I wanted to try to go to university. I wanted to, you know, go to prom and and have these experiences, uh, you know, not overshadowed by by this acting career I was I was building. Um, so I, you know, this project is is my best attempt at getting back into this space, uh, but also to demonstrate the skills that I've learned along the way. I mean, I've I've been lucky enough to work in the Canadian industry a little while. And, um, I've been able to develop my, my, you know, some skills in writing and in storytelling. And I kind of just wanted to, um, you know, demonstrate to, uh, an audience if they're interest interested and to myself, you know, can I execute on an idea that I've had? Can I follow through and can it be entertaining? So basically this is to help you out to like re-enter into the entertainment business by building your own project with, uh, finding DW. 
I hope so. I mean, I, I think that, you know, in today's entertainment climate is a lot different than than even when I was a, a voice actor. You know, I think that um, it's it's important for creators, or at least I think it's very important for the kind of creative I want to be that, um, you know, I, I can put my my money where my mouth is and, and, and prove that, hey, you know, I want to. Uh, be the creator or the lead on on projects and 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 I had and that I can prove that I'm capable of doing so. Now, I understand how you feel honestly because like I'm kind of like in a reverse kind of situation as you are now like even though I am working regularly as a, a content creator, I am trying to get myself into acting as well. I even um well, I'm not a full member, but I do have a, a, an actra apprentice uh, apprentice. Hey, congratulations. Actually. Hey, thank That's you so awesome. much. Yeah, now now the now the real task is trying to find like work that can give me credit because that's honestly pretty tricky. Um, I mean, yeah, it, don't ask me for advice because all I'll say is hope that you'll fall, you know, randomly into a really great role. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. But um, also, one thing I don't know if you know this, but I think I've mentioned this a long time ago in my podcast. But um, believe it or not, I actually knew one of the uh, actors that voiced DW. Uh, I actually knew Robert Naylor, believe it or not. Oh, no way. Robert is awesome. Oh, he's he such is. a he's such a good guy. I I'm so excited that you know him. Yeah, it's been a long, long time though. Like it was in I think it was during the time when he was the voice of DW, like after okay. you. And yep. um and, and uh, I remember like it was only from time to time that we would meet up because we were in the same acting school back then. We were in different classes. But, um, like often when we would chat and we would meet up, like he's a very chill, like he was a very chill dude. So, uh, like during that time, like, uh, did you, did you end up uh, catching up with him for the podcast and, uh, talked with him? Yeah. So, so that was one of the coolest parts about doing this podcast was I, I had never been in touch with anyone else who had ever played DW before. And I mean, just to give you context, it's the kind of thing where when I was a kid and even to this day, I've been called DW as a nickname. Like this is something that has been a big part of my identity to the point where it erases my real name, which is not DW. Uh, so it was really exciting to, to talk to um, any uh, of the actors that I've spoken to so far. Uh, Robert in particular was was really cool because when I spoke to him, there was he was the guy who took over from me, and he's one of the few um, former voice actors who played DW who's gone on to to have a, a pretty robust career as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I was recently in Montreal uh, for personal reasons, and I was you know COVID safely able able to. Uh, meet up with uh, Robert on a, at a coffee shop just to chat. I mean, uh, we'd already spoken for this podcast, uh, but I, you know, we we just got on so well. I felt it was, you know, it would be nice to just connect on a on a personal level. Uh, so he's he's a really awesome guy, and uh, yeah, it's cool that we have that connection. Nah, it, it's great to hear that Robert still has that chill vibe. You know, it's it's yeah. great to hear that. Um, I also got another question regarding the factor of DW, and um. One thing that I really am curious, like considering that you did have experience being DW, uh, is regarding the amount of hate that comes from DW, because to this day, a lot of people do consider DW as like one of the most hated cartoon characters of all time. <laughs> so um, in your personal opinion, how do you feel about that title given to a character that you have voiced for years? I mean, if that's true, I'm I'm very proud of that. Uh, it, it's so cool to be a part of. Uh, again, I, I, I it really was a random thing, like to to have become uh, the voice of DW on Arthur. I I mean, I had no one in in my circle when I was ten was in the business, and uh, it, it really just was a lucky opportunity. I'm so glad it happened because it was so much fun. Um, and then on top of that, that it's this popular show. You know, to to have played a part in this show that people still remember and remember fondly. That it was also, uh, you know, the kind of show where it it had it placed an importance in the same way that like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood talked about. You know, placed a heavy emphasis on caring about the mental health and well-being of children, and you know, uh, tried to make kids 
more in touch with their emotions and uh, care about each other and that we're all, you know, family or we're all a neighborhood. I mean, the fact that I was on a show like that, too, uh, I, I feel very lucky. And so the fact that our DW is remembered, whether it's, you know, being hated or not, I, I think it's the coolest. Yeah, that is true. It's like, like ra- rather if it's beloved or hated, it is still like a memorable character that did make her spot in pop culture. Yeah, I mean, like uh, DW memes are shared on TikTok. Like this, it, she is not going away, and so it's it's really cool for for me. Uh, I mean, I I haven't always had such a positive relationship with it, but it's the coolest for me to be a part of to to have been a part of something like that. All right, and um. I, I'm sure, like, by doing this big project, because I'm sure it's pretty crazy, like, to go and search for all these different people. But what I'm uh, curious about is regarding, like, is there anything that you consider to be, like, your biggest discovery or, like, what is, like, the biggest thing you've learned from doing this entire podcast? What What, what would you say is your biggest discovery from all this? So two things come to mind. One is that... I've sort of talked about it in terms of the questions I'm asking myself when I was sort of describing the show earlier on in our in our chat here. Um, but but I've really identified that um, I think this podcast marks my my biggest attempt at um, getting past an existential crisis I've had since being DW, like uh, trying to trying to um, move on from from that experience, but in a way where you know not in a way where I'm trying to like push it down or, or hide from it. You know, playing DW was a, a big part of my life and I'm still trying to understand how it affected, how it affected and changed me. Uh, for example, you know, I've always wanted to work in show business as, you know, working on a, on a late show or it's an, uh, a talk show or, you know, as a writer or director. And I, and I want to know, did I want to do that before I was DW or did playing DW plant that idea in me? So, so on a personal level, uh, that's sort of one thing I've I've sort of been uh, exploring. But on on a on a in terms of something I've discovered, yeah, I mean, I I learned that DW is based on a real person, and I uh, I'm trying to track down that person. Oh wow! Okay. Okay, I'm sure that would make one hell of an episode in your podcast. <laughs> like if you do find that person. I hope so. I mean, it takes finding DW as a title to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. I actually, like, I, I have been thinking, like, one like one guess that would be pretty big for your show, but, um, like, I, I'm sure someone might ask eventually, but um, have you considered contacting Mark Brown himself to be a part of the show? Oh, I've definitely considered that. I think that um, Mark Brown is the coolest, and um, I've looked into him I've read up on him. It's I I was not aware, uh, you know, how much of a an impact uh, Mr. Rogers had on him and on his storytelling. Um, but to but to think of how prolific Mark Brown was and uh, is is really special and 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 I I think very highly of Mark Brown. All right, and um, considering that you are starting things off with a, a podcast for now, um, I have been curious, um, like. You are like for now, I understand that you're just starting with a podcast with the whole experience with DW. But with this idea that you have, have you considered maybe like after the podcast, would you want to go and try something bigger with DW, like make a uh, like a a documentary or, or something like that? I mean, like, are you are you in my brain? Like, that's is that my diary. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Abso- that is very insightful. Uh, absolutely, it's a little bit weird that you know exactly my plan. No, there is no plan, but I I definitely have thought about it um, before I launched, before I really got into the thick of it, because now I'm sort of deep into the process of of trying to you know track down these guys and and write the episodes. Um, but when I was starting out. I was planning on trying to do both a podcast and a documentary. Um, but since, you know, I, I decided um, through a lot of uh, helpful advice from friends that are much smarter than I am, uh, you know, I decided that it would make more sense to focus just on this podcast, make this podcast the best it can be, tell the best story I can, 
And if the opportunity comes to make a documentary, that's something I really would like to do. I, I think that there's definitely, what I've learned is that there's definitely an audience for the story I'm telling. Uh, and I think there's a lot of room to grow beyond just Arthur. But but for myself, I think that um, it's it's not, I don't find it helpful to myself to and my creative process to have expectations. So I actually, I mean it when I say I'm just, making this podcast to the best it can be and we'll see what happens. I mean, like it's it's provided already all kinds of cool opportunities and fun stuff. I get to be on this show for example. Uh you know, it's 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 been so awesome and 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 yeah, I just want to see where it goes. No, that's perfectly understandable and I I I do get what you mean because like you want to focus on the one thing and make it the best possible. I I understand that. Often like I would go through that at times for my own projects, like to just focus on that, make it the best it can be. And then if anything more can come to it, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's again when I was when I was uh, talking about, you know, the reasons why I admire what you do at the top of the show. I, I really mean it. I, I find it very challenging even to just make this one project the best it can be and 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 to to look at all the verticals of what you do i i think is you know I, on a personal level i i think it's really really uh exceptional oh thank you thank you now i do have one more question that i would like to know because it, it's kind of funny to see how like even in my chat wall a lot of people were very much surprised to see that you would come in and say you are the voice of dw so from there <laughs> like has it like I'm sure it probably happens from time to time that like when you would interact with people and then you would say you're the voice of DW, um, like they would be surprised. Like, uh, would there be ways that how how would you convince people that you were actually the voice of DW? I mean, I'm sure puberty prevents you from actually perfectly recreating that voice. But um, like yeah. if someone on the street would say, like, how how would you prove that you were the voice of DW. I, wow. I, I mean, so first of all, I, just to address, uh, you know, people saying like, how or why am I, am I coming on the show to say I was the voice of DW? I do sort of have an answer to that. And then I'll answer the question about how do I prove it? And so the reason why, and, and why I really want to do this, uh, is, is because I, Again, like I, I want to prove myself as a, a good storyteller, as a good host, as a good writer, a good producer. And but the truth is, while you know DW, you know Arthur, you don't know me, probably. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not an influencer. I don't have a following. Um, but I have, you know, been working on stuff, you know, for my whole life, pretty much. And so I want to use and for so long I was, you know, trying to hide the DW thing um, because I wanted to get people excited about me as an adult person, not for something I did when I was 10. But, you know, now, I, you know, I've spent, who knows, really, my whole life trying to work on stuff and get people excited about projects. And I just decided, you know, forget that false modesty. I, I'm just going to lean fully into the DW thing and have that be my hook. And hopefully people are interested in this whole idea, but they stick around because hopefully they like what I'm putting out. So that's why I'm I'm you know, now I'm proud of the DW thing uh, because it does set me apart. Now, uh, to answer your question, how do I prove it? Um, I usually just ask people to Google it. I don't really it doesn't bother me <laughs> if people don't believe me. Um, it helps when I have friends around who know it's true uh, because it does sound kind of like a lie, like it's such a weird thing you know like you look like you would never know just like you would never know any voice actor or you know puppeteer or anyone who's a, a, an actor or performer where it's not their face um but it doesn't really bother me if people don't believe me all right that that is interesting all right so ba basically the short answer is like i hey, google it you'll see <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> All right. So with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall and I would like to ask you all if you have any additional questions for Jason, rather it be about the podcast, his experience with DW or anything like that. Um, now is the time that you can go and ask. So any questions you may have, uh, please ask away now. Uh, let's see now. Uh, do we have any questions? First of all, sometimes it will take a, a little while to see if it will load. Uh, 
Well, someone is asking, uh, were you ever made fun fun of for it? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, for sure I was. And I think that what's been nice about doing the, the podcast is I've been able to talk to um, some of the older, the guys who did the voice before me and the people who have played DW more recently. And it's been nice to see that, that there has been a shift where, where while I, I did experience some of some, you know, teasing and, and, and bullying and stuff, uh, it didn't happen as much to, or, a, or at all to the um, guys who played DW more recently. All right. That's good. Um, uh, I got another one that did ask, um, were you the voice of DW when they had Matt Damon on the show? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I was in, um, the one where they did the Backstreet Boys. Oh, yeah, uh, that was a thing. Arthur, it's only rock and roll. I think that was me, but no, I, I don't think I was in, if I was in the Matt Damon one, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But like, even with the, um, with the one with the Backstreet Boys, like, were you actually in the studio with them or like, was it all separate? Uh, I, I did most of my recording separately. Uh, so in general, I actually didn't meet a lot of the actors. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, actually, oh, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. That would, that was actually, that would, that would have been a, a great question. So, so basically, <laughs> um, wh when you were record, wh when you were recording for DW, you weren't with any of the other actors, um, uh, do, doing the voices or anything like that it was like it was all on your own usually it was yeah I, like i said there was the one there was the one other voice actor who played one of dw's friends one of the tibble twins and so sometimes i would record with him uh but generally uh they would just feed me in my headphones um maybe some of the other voices that i was acting alongside in a, in a given scene uh but usually i just did all my recording on my own Ah, okay. Okay. That's interesting. I, I actually have done um, some voice acting experience lately. I can't say what they are now because of NDA reasons, but um, generally there have been times when I was alone, but there were a few instances I was with others and sometimes the, the dynamic can be pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd love to have an opportunity to do something where I'm acting alongside someone, you know, in, in, in real time. I, I think it would provide such a such a different dynamic and a, and a different, more fun experience. All right. Um, yeah. And we got another question. Do you have any favorite memory related to Arthur? Yeah. Um, so my favorite memory is, is honestly just this one episode that I did called bleep, uh, where DW learns a swear word. And, uh, I, I really like that. I got to be a part of that episode because that's one of those, you know, like, you'll see on on the internet like i can't believe this episode of so and so show was oh, ever yeah. made this is that one for arthur <laughs> and so i'm so proud that i was a part of that uh so for me it's just that just being a part of um of of that episode and and to a larger extent uh yeah just just being part of something that made that people enjoyed yeah and for that bleep episode like you didn't actually say a swear or anything like just to <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it just said bleep in the um, in the script. But if you watch the episode, it's like just the classic sensor like beep noise. Uh, so it's very jarring to see it in a in an Arthur episode. And it happens a lot. Like a, a, a mat, like like just this massive twist of just DW coming in and suddenly like you would see the behind the scenes stuff. And it's like, oh, it actually is a real swear or something. I know. I even saw a YouTube video by this YouTuber named Scott Kramer where he tries to understand um, who I've spoken to for the podcast and um, where he, he tries to figure out what the swear word is based on reading the lips of the cartoon characters. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to help. <laughs> <laughs> Pro probably not, but he tries his best. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. I think everybody I, I think everybody would try. It's like it's like that SpongeBob episode that that has that same concept where like they they would swear and people try to figure out what is that swear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh let's see. Um well, someone asks, um how do you feel about voicing a little girl like DW from Arthur, a show that I grew up as a kid? <laughs> Um, I, I'm really proud again, like, as I said, it's, it's cool to have played a, the voice of such an iconic character. Um, I, I think it's really cool. Oh, here's an interesting one. Uh, do you have a favorite Arthur meme? Oh 
man. Um, yes, uh, the one where it's it is a DW one. Uh, it's where uh, DW is looking at a sign on a door, and 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 the you know the text will say uh, yes. that sign can't stop me. I can't read, and people <laughs> insert like that won't stop me for whatever situation they're in. Yeah. I think that's a really good. Yeah, that is true. Any are, are there any of the DW memes that like you actually voice? Like that that one in particular, that was not you or I don't think so. I actually don't know. I I I know that the big ones like where it's DW like looking through a fence or um or that one that I just described or the one where DW's tired and like her eyes are kind of all wonky, that meme. I I, I don't know. I don't know if those are from my episodes. It's hard I, and I don't think they are. Ah, okay uh let's see oh well someone wants to know a little bit more about you uh okay. uh were you on uh what were you on other projects outside of arthur and uh, did you have any other roles in different shows or mainly on pbs um yeah so so i i'm a canadian person and so i did i did a teletoon show for example and and small smaller productions where i got to be a voice actor um, I did like a little bit of live action acting, but I really don't think of myself as a live action actor, although I would love to try it. Um, but other than that Teletoon thing I just said, and, and, and one or two spots, you know, I've done student films, that kind of thing. Um, I haven't really done as much acting in my adult life as I'd like to have. So, so like nowadays, would you want to try to experience more of it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, so, so as I said, like I, I worked briefly in production and I've had all kinds of jobs in, you know, I'm based in Toronto now. I, I've worked for all sorts of different places and had good experiences and bad experiences. Um, but I've never, you know, I, I, I definitely would like to get back into acting and, and if given the opportunity, I think it would be really fun. Oh, absolutely. No, nah, it, it, it is like when, when you get into those moments, it definitely, uh, is fun. All right, I'll read yeah. uh, one more question for you. Uh, yep. Let's see, just want to double check. Um, oh, this okay. This is going to be an interesting one. Do you have a favorite <laughs> Arthur episode? Um, geez, I don't know. Um, so episodes I did uh, bleep for sure. Um, but episodes overall, um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it you know as i'm doing these more and more of of these kinds of things you know coming on podcasts or doing interviews and stuff i i, I usually ask people if they're going to ask me this question so that i can think about it more uh so you know i'm i'm stumped there's so many good ones i mean classic ones from uh from dw trying to save that snowball um you know dw eats a green potato chip um dw episodes where dw and binky te uh the bully character team up in general are really funny like um there's the one where um binky and dw team up for a school project and they learn a ballet together that's a really funny one um there's there's a lot it's it's hard to pinpoint i don't think i do have a favorite yeah it's understandable and especially with something like arthur in particular, I, I feel like there there's so many episodes by this point that it's hard to really pinpoint like what would be your favorite besides like Arthur is almost as old as us. Yeah, yeah. I mean Arthur Arthur's the second longest running animated series, second only to The Simpsons. Like it's been on for a very long time. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if I would say the second longest in general. I would probably have to like double check, but it definitely is like one of the longest. Like that we can all agree. For sure. For sure. All right. So now that we have our Arthur discussions done, um, cool. I have several trailers that um, I would like to go and present and to talk about. So um, would you like to join me on this, Jason? I would be honored. Uh, all right, that is great to hear. And the uh, first trailer that I have over here, um, this is honestly something that, for me personally, I've been anticipating for quite some time. Like, it's a movie that we have heard a lot about, but we haven't known any much information other than the fact that we know one of the directors is the same guy who directed, uh, well, one of the directors of Tangled and Zootopia, and it will have music from Lin-Manuel Miranda. 
But it's not until just recently that we actually have a clip or we actually have a first look onto what it actually looks like. So with that said, let us go ahead and take a look at the teaser trailer for Disney's Encanto. I gave you the special since you're the only Madrigal kid with no gift. I call it the not special special since, uh, you have no gift. Uh, thanks? Gift or no gift? I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more pink? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. <sighs> so that was Encanto, which is going to be coming out uh, this November. So, Jason, how do you personally feel about what you've seen so far with the Encanto trailer? I mean, I, I'm excited. I, I'm i really a, a Pixar uh, fanboy. Um, I, I defer to your judgment because, or, or I'd love to hear what you think because, um, yeah, I mean, with, with all the, the, the recent Pixar ones, I know that they're, you know, opinions are mixed by, depending, I think, on how old we are when we see these movies. Like, for example, I just saw Luca. Uh, how did, did Have you seen that one? And, and if so, what did you think about it? Yes, I have actually. Uh, honestly, I really liked it. Actually, it's not like I do agree. It's not necessarily like the masterpiece level, like what we had last time with Soul, but it was still a very, very good and really charming movie. Like even like when when the film finished, like I was just there, like, oh my god, this was so charming. Like I really had a blast with it. I couldn't agree more. And. Uh... You know that, and uh, I did you have you seen Onward? Yes, I have. It's you know it's all right, but like that yeah. that one, it's like I I, I didn't I don't look at it as highly as like I would with Luca or something like that. It's just a lot of it just seems like a little eh. But what like the factor of it, like when, when there are things that do work, they really do work. Like it's a very heartfelt movie, and you could tell the director. Uh, really put a lot of his, uh, like, a lot of effort into it to tell this personal story. And you can, like, actually see it, especially with the, uh, you know, with the wish of, like, meeting the the long-lost dad. Yeah. it, it uh, So that's the thing, right? Like, I, I go into all of these more recent Pixar movies knowing that there are usually mixed opinions on them. And I, and I always come away from, I mean, really, like, I, I feel similarly to you as with Onward, but... But I really liked that. I really liked Luca, uh, and so I'm just excited to see what they what they do next. And 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 that was one of the reasons why I was excited to talk to you specifically was to get your takes on these movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, with Encanto, I just want to clarify one thing. Like technically, this is Disney animation. It's not really Pixar. So, oh, it's not. Okay, my mistake. Yeah. Yeah. No, but still, it, it's fine. It's fine. Like especially nowadays, like they're almost one and the same. It's like they're cousins. You know. So like it, it's not so yeah like it's not that like far off anyways but um going back into Encanto for me I would say if there is one thing that I would criticize right now just to get like the negatives out of the way one thing for me I was kind of surprised and a little bit like eh, about is really the fact that we're going back to another story about the non a uh, special person in a family or in a group of like really special people, because I feel like 
we're seeing those all the time now. Like now it's starting to become yeah. a little bit repetitive. And uh, one comparison I've seen all the time that's been done like so often is My Hero Academia. But also like just thinking of plenty of other things uh, that are comparable, uh, like Invincible that we just got on um, Amazon, which is a fantastic series. Uh, and also like even thinking back of like some of the other stuff, like uh, like one movie that it really makes me think of is uh, Sky High. Have you seen that movie? I have seen that movie, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little bit like that. And, like, I, I know this is just the concept, and that's just the one thing that I feel like, oh, like, here we go again. But other than that, though, the rest of it, oh, my God, this is, like, really built up to be something amazing. The animation is absolutely beautiful and highly detailed. Um, we are like the characters that we do see is a bunch of uh, like a bunch of like super powered people that have their own unique ability. And you could even yeah. see like their own unique personality and even like a little bit of the taste of the music as well that like they really are embracing that south american theme and not just that but also with the uh with the animation as well i feel like there's like the one element with the with the concept of the story that like is a little iffy that we would have to wait and see but everything else i gotta say like yeah i'm pretty confident this is gonna be amazing and probably one of the major standout animated features of the year and also i just want to clarify one major yeah. thing because i know a lot of people have mentioned to me it was like well you, you know like when, when i mentioned the criticism of that story being a little repetitive like i understand that there is that chance that it could turn out good and i'm all open to it like i'm just talking about my experience from the teaser trailer itself and i can have confidence that like even with an idea that's not as original they could actually um turn out to be really good like for example i mentioned invincible and that is a series that came out this year that has that same concept, yet the execution of it really makes it worth it and really makes it its own thing. And I definitely can see with Encanto that with its idea that it can still come out with its own thing. So for me, honestly, seeing what we got here with Encanto, I'm definitely hyped up for it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I thought of the same comparison you made with like with My Hero Academia. Uh, and and I've and I, you know, I watch a lot of anime and, you know, that trope is something that I, I see a lot. And frankly, like I often don't get tired of it. I mean, I, I've seen, uh, you know, there's a series called Black Clover that's really great that follows like it's the same concept, but the story around it is entirely different, you know. Uh, it's a world full of magic and one person doesn't have magic or it's a world full of superpowers, but one person doesn't have superpowers. I think it's entirely in, in the stories that are built around that trope. I think that, you know, it's all in the execution. And like you said, there's a lot of elements in Encanto that seem promising. And and as I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big Disney and Pixar fanboy. So, you know, I, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I, I, absolutely. Is there... um. Would there be one like from what you have seen so far? Do you have a a favorite character? Oh geez, no, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I just don't. I'm sorry. I wish I could give a better answer. Yeah, I know. Like this is just the introduction, and we're all meeting the characters for the first time. But it's kind of funny, honestly, because I have started to notice that, um, like on social media, like when this was released, there was a lot, like a lot of people were freaking out about Mirabelle. Uh, the uh -huh. one the one that doesn't have any superpowers that yeah. there's a lot of love there and also one thing that I am surprised that not that the trailer doesn't highlight as much is honestly the capybara because when when they did put like because the day before they released the trailer like there was this one capybara that a lot of people were like really fixated on you know uh, you know like every time you see like a cute animal like on social media everybody's just like oh look at a kitty and, and that's what yeah. everybody <laughs> that's what everybody did it's like oh my god a capybara <laughs> and people like people were really like really excited to know more about this capybara and maybe we'll know more later like when other trailers do come out but that's also a funny thing that i have noticed it's like a lot of people are either freaking out about mirabelle or the capybara for me <laughs> I, I, I will say i don't know right now but um like i don't know really any of the of the names i don't know if they have revealed them yet but um like if i would have a pick like there are some that definitely do stand out either like the straw like 
the girl with the muscles and that like that is honestly something you don't see a lot in media like women who do have that super strength or even like um the flower girl as well she you know she seems like a a, a lot of fun but I, I i could definitely see how uh like in here we're, we're gonna have a lot of like really standout characters especially with all the different um uh, abilities that they would have yeah, I agree, because I think that it depends how, for example, the world that these characters live in rely on those, you know, powers. Like, for example, if there's somebody who can manipulate water, is that person a fisherman in this story? Or, you know, somebody who has the ability to um, to manipulate uh, flowers and, and do they, you know, do gardening and sell flowers? You, you know, I, I, it's interesting, like I said before, to see how... Um, this trope or, you know, a world with powers, a world with whatever, um, how it's incorporated into the story they're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. and, and and I will say also the execution as well. Like one thing that not many people have mentioned uh, is like a little bit of the humor that we have so far. Like technically we did have just one joke, but it is still a pretty good joke at the end. It's like where she's like where Mirabelle is like, you know, kind of uh like assuring herself it's like i'm as special as everyone else and then the one little girl's like maybe you're special maybe your superpower is that you're in denial yeah <laughs> like that, that was a great joke yeah that that yeah. i will admit is actually pretty funny so i will say i know there isn't a whole lot to talk about because it is still a teaser trailer but i will say it is a very effective teaser trailer and has given us a good taste of what is going to be to come with this movie. So overall, I definitely am excited for Encanto. And um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll be experiencing this on, on the, like I, I would be more than happy to check this out on the big screen. And there is no confirmation by the way, rather if this is going to be like um, just in theaters or if they're going to do that mix as well, like put it out on the big screen and on Disney plus, but if they do have that option, uh, which one would you do? Oh man. I mean, like, if I can go to a theater safely, I, I've been really itching to get back. But, uh, you know, here in Toronto, things are still, you know, we're 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 slated to to have things open up as we enter phase three this Friday. But I I don't know. I mean, I, I'm if if it's if I'm able to do it safely, I would love to see anything in theaters, especially something like this. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. For me, I would definitely go to the big screen for this one. And I mean, like, we are at the point where things are getting better. And um, like, we're like, like we're, we are getting more and more vaccinated. Like, did, did you get your vaccines yet? I'm, d I'm double vaxxed. I feel va I'm very lucky. Really? All righty. Yes, Congra congratulations. Me, I'm getting double. I'm actually going to get double vaxxed tomorrow. I actually got oh, that. Oh, there stable. you go. Yes. So, awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Everyone get vaccinated. Get get yeah that that would be a great way to encourage people get vaccinated so that you can go and see Encanto on the big screen safe and yes. sound enjoying popcorn and just having fun. Couldn't agree more. So yeah, um, if you are all excited to see Encanto on the big screen, then just remember it's going to be coming out this November. So with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall right now, and I would like to ask you all, how do you feel about the teaser trailer of Encanto? Are you guys excited for it? Do you have any concerns with uh, what they are presenting? Let me know what you all think so far. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, oh, this is interesting. Uh, I'm not sure about this. The animation looks great, like always, but it's kind of like My Hero uh, Academia, uh, Academia, where everyone has something and someone doesn't, for example, Deku and Mirabelle. But the plot yeah. looks uh, looks like the same like other movies, but it reminds me of Coco, which is a masterpiece, and Lin-Manuel Miranda is going to be ma making the music, so it could be good. Looks like we'll see what it's like in November. Exactly. I, I like the funny thing with the one criticism there, like that is more just a wait and see kind of thing because you could tell it does offer something unique with that element. And there could be a way that there is a twist. And I think that's like, if that's the, if that's the worst thing so far with this movie, then I think it's off to a really great track. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we got. 
Well, no shock here. The film looks pretty spectacular. The animation is insanely gorgeous. I like how they make the house itself a character, and the music is phenomenal, so I'll definitely check it out whenever I can. Uh, however, it is a little it is a little weird to have this film set in Colombia, where the lead actress uh, claimed to be uh, Chile Domini uh, Curican, but she always says that she's from Queens. I know that doesn't change anything, but I'd just like to make that reference. Oh, uh, it's probably... Oh, I think... Um, yeah, because, the, uh, like, isn't the main character... I think she... Like, the main actress that, who's going to be voicing Mirabelle, I believe she's from uh, Brooklyn Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I believe? Oh, is it? Is it... Um, I it's think a, you might be right, because I did look quickly yeah, it's, uh, on the Stephanie IMDb something, I believe. Yeah. It's... Uh, so, I think she's... Is she... Um, Detective Diaz, am I thinking of the right person, or am I? I might not probably. be right about that. Probably, but... I'm not. I'm not too familiar with Brooklyn Nine Nine Nine. I will admit, but it's probably that. Uh, let's see now. This movie looks really good. Uh, not so new. Uh, this movie looks really good. Not so unique and very fun. Uh, Lin Manuel Miranda's movie, Netflix, uh, movie Vivo. Uh, where are you playing? Uh, where are you? Yeah, sorry. It's just uh, the grammar on this. Sometimes it's. Not the best, so bear with me on this. Um, uh, where uh, where are you? Play the monkey. What's a little bit better by something that he wrote, direct, add the music uh, to not just take up time with Tim Rice and doing the music like uh, an Elton John or something, but it looks kind of fun, mind-blowing, but interesting. Yes, I think he likes it. <laughs> yeah. Also, I can confirm that, yeah, it is It is uh, Stephanie Beatriz, who, or Beatriz, excuse me, uh, who plays Detective Diaz on uh, on Brooklyn Nine Nine? Who's playing Mirabelle? There we go. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm totally hyped up for this movie. The animation is amazing, and the music feels very reminiscent to Blue Skies Rio. I also thought the joke where the one kid says that her gift is being in denial was funny. I will definitely be checking this out when it comes out, and I will be seeing this in theaters. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Disney is really improving themselves. Uh, after making two sequels. While Raya and the Last Dragon already brought Disney back to their game, Encanto is definitely showing all their potential. I'm really excited for Encanto to come out, and I'm so glad it's not another sequel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, th this person is just not a fan of uh, the recent sequels that we got. Yeah, and, and it is true when you think about it, because this is, like, technically, this is the first original musical that Disney is going to bring out since Moana, so... It's going to be like a fresh, exciting new Disney film, not just another animated film. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. I'm sure this person's right, and I'm sure you're right. I just I, I didn't realize that. Did you like Moana, by the way? I did. No, it's really yeah, good. Me too. Oh, my God. Yeah, I really like the music in it. Oh, of course. So, yeah, and and like if we're if we're gonna have that music of Moana in Encanto, then it's 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 gonna be fine. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, let's see. Well, this sounds like uh, sort of an anime plot in which there's a world of powerful characters except the main, uh, <laughs> but they still have something that makes them special. But I'm still interested in it. Mirabelle seems likable and a really cute character. Hell, she looks exactly like my younger sister's college friend, though she is Mexican while Mi Mirabelle is uh, Colombian. Just give her a different pair of glasses and she could cosplay as her. Uh, once more, 2021 is an amazing year for animation. Oh, absolutely. So far, things have been great so far with it. Uh, let's see. I'll read uh, one more comment before we jump into the uh, next story. I am really looking forward to this picture. The animation is gorgeous uh, to look at, and the music will really get my finger and toes tapping. Although, I do kind of agree that the, cl that the cliche you brought up has been overdone. I am highly stoked for this film when it comes out this Thanksgiving, or more specifically, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's all. That's always been a confusing part. But like, whenever they say it's like this Thanksgiving, it was like, oh, really? Yeah, still have to wait like much longer than that for us. Yeah, Canadian audiences look to each other like they mean American Thanksgiving. Yeah, anyway. pr yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's not like movies would do something special for Canadian Thanksgiving, anyways. <laughs> that's all saved up for the Halloween stuff. Hey, I'm down. I lo I love Halloween season for movies, so I'm into that. Oh, absolutely. And uh, moving on to the next trailer that we have, um, I have a question for you. Are you a uh, Marvel fan? Like, do you, are, are you a follower of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe? 
I am. I used to be much. I used to follow it a lot more closely than I have. But because I knew that we were talking about it, I spent a lot of today brushing up on what's been going on and catching up on storylines. Um, yeah, it was it was a blast. I'm really excited for Phase Four and beyond. All right. Well, uh, however, we got a new series that's going to be coming up, and uh, well, the Phase Four. Well, let's just say it's going to be going in a lot of different directions and that is especially because with the new animation introduction to the marvel cinematic universe so with that said let's go ahead and check out the trailer for marvel studios what if yeah peace i love peace i'd be out of a job with peace Do we know each other? Time. Reality. Reality. It's changeable. Where you want to be? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe is different. Each one unique. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I, I get it. Who are you? The name's Captain Carter. I am the Watcher. I observe all that transpires here. But I do not, cannot, will not interfere. I guess I have to freestyle then. Hey! We have you out of bird. A Ravager never flies solo. I said, never flies solo. Uh, is that some kind of catchphrase? You had me worried for a second. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question. What if? And that is What If, the latest animated series or the upcoming animated series uh, that will be arriving on Disney Plus that will go into alternate universes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, Jason, how did you feel about that? I got to say, I'm really excited about it. I think that it. It, you know, it's it's like when when we were kids sitting around being like, what if the Hulk was Spider-Man or what if, you know, Wolverine was a whatever, you know, it's just it's it's answering those questions and it's playing with the Marvel Universe like it's this sandbox. And, and it's exciting. I think there's a lot of room to explore a, a lot of ways to be creative. I, and I love the idea of, you know, just messing with the timeline and having us all be confused with all these cool new stories. I And, and I think that. You know, if we saw anything with Spider-Verse, it's that, you know, if we learned anything from Spider-Verse, it's that like when you give, um, you know, talented writers and creators, uh, you know, free reign to tell the stories they want to tell and be creative with these, you know, these icons that we know, like like Marvel characters, we get to we can get some really cool stuff. So I, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, just out of curiosity, like, was there anything in this trailer were you surprised to actually see, like, with some of the ideas that they would bring up that, oh, this character is now this character or this character switched sides or they're now going to feature this character or, like, introduce these concepts? What were you the most surprised about? I think the thing that stood out to me the most was the idea of uh, T'Challa as... Um 
as uh, what's I'm um, blanking Star-Lord? on the name uh, Star as Star Lord. Thank you. Um, because uh, I was like, wait, is that? And it was. Uh, you know, th- this this will feature uh, Chadwick Boseman's voice, and this is actually the last thing that he did before he, you know, un- uh, unfortunately passed away. And so uh, it was really. Uh, it definitely took me out of it. I was like, wait, is this his voice? Like, did they get someone to do it? I, I think it's it's so, you know, I loved Black Panther so, so much. Mm-hmm. I thought it was awesome. And so uh, for me to, to to see that character in a new light and, and to, you know, to allow him to have that that one last hurrah, uh, I think is, is really special. So that's what stood out to me. Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely understand with that, especially if they did get uh, Chadwick Boseman to voice this new... Uh, the, this new ch- how, how can i say it t- t- t'challa lord yeah i, guess. I hope i'm saying it right exactly t'challa lord yeah <laughs> yeah actually for me what i find to be pretty surprising um is actually right at the beginning where they did recreate that scene in the first iron man movie and then suddenly killmonger suddenly comes in to go and yeah. save tony stark like that was yeah. actually surprising that they're gonna introduce like this new good uh, Killmonger because l- like you, I love um, Black Panther. It's such a, a great movie, and especially with Killmonger, definitely one of the most fascinating villains in the MCU. And now seeing him as a good guy, like it is true that when you do think about it, like among all the villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Killmonger is definitely one of them that. You could see him go into the good side. Like there like he's one of those that you could see how he can be a good guy like in some kind of alternate universe and I guess we will have our chance to see him uh in this. Yeah, I, I mean I I liked his character a lot. I, I I think that Michael B Jordan brought a lot of 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 nuance and and um charisma to that role and and it made me like Killmonger a lot as a character. And so to see that character in a new light, I think is really neat. And I agree with what you said. I think it'll be really cool to see. Yeah. And, and also for me, like another one that, well, there are a few, like some standout moments for me and like probably more standout for like a lot of people. Like there was the one little moment that we do actually see Howard, the duck, like just this (laughs) one quick moment, like in the trailer where suddenly just, Howard makes like a sudden little appearance. I, I don't know where it is specifically, but just need to double check. But um, yeah, like right, right here. Like it, it's like a moment that just came and went so quickly, but yeah, like Howard is suddenly prominently in there. So we don't know if, it, if there's going to be a story that will be about him or something like that. But it, it is true that like, there's never been a legit moment where Howard actually had his shining moment except for that post credit scene in Guardians of the Galaxy. So it would be fun to see Howard actually have a more prominent role, uh, especially in the MCU. Yeah, like what if Howard the Duck was actually Bruce Banner and was exposed to radiation and became the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> you know, this show can can take on things like that. Or, or, or even like, ha- or like actually be more serious and have a more alternate universe of like, what if Howard the Duck actually had a good movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know which one is more hard to believe. Yeah, that, who knows about that. But one thing I will say I was pretty surprised about. Now, this was something I saw in the poster and not actually in the trailer. They did mention that they're going to show Spider-Man at times. But what they didn't show and what they did reveal in the poster is that eventually they're going to turn Spider-Man into the next Doctor Strange, where we saw Spider-Man wearing um, Doctor Strange's cap and, uh, well, his cape, I mean, not his cap, but... um, And it does make me think that maybe it will also uh, be a little bit of a hint of what's going to be to come, especially with Phase 4, considering that the next uh, Spider-Man movie, I believe they are going to go and uh, introduce the the really get into the concept of multiverses. So I wonder if there if there is going to be that connection between what if and with the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe. I know that some say that technically it's more of a side thing, like just to present some alternate universes, like with the Marvel zombies and, and with stuff like that. But it does make me wonder if there is like a legit connection where you can actually take this and put it somewhere in phase four, kind of like what we are seeing right now with Loki. Yeah, I I think it'd be it'd be cool to see that. I mean, who knows, right? I I just hope that 
I, 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 I want to see some cool stories with some characters I love in new situations. And so this, this presents that opportunity, but like you're saying, yeah, it would be cool if there was, if they could tie it into, uh, to, to any of the other movies. Yeah, absolutely. So overall, I would say that, um, this looks like a pretty fascinating addition to, uh, the MCU and especially considering how so far we have seen a lot of strong potential with the, uh, Marvel cinematic universe, uh, series on Disney plus, especially with what yes. we had with, uh, WandaVision with, um, the Falcon and the winter soldier. And even right now with Loki, especially yeah, yeah. with Loki, uh, this one looks like it's going to be another one of those additions where people are really going to be keeping their eyes out. And so far, I will say, like, it looks great. Uh, the concepts are very fascinating. And it still stays true to, like, what the what the MCU really is all about. So, honestly, I think, uh, I think Disney Plus will gain something really good here. I totally agree. And, and yeah, like, like you're saying, these, these Disney Plus series have been awesome. I loved WandaVision so much. Uh, you know, here are these characters that I didn't know a whole lot about, but, you know, with that subversive uh, storytelling style and, you know, no spoilers, but just the way that story unfolds and how it pays homage to to the history of television. I mean, I grew up on um, TV from the 70s and the 60s because my dad's really into that stuff. And so I grew up with like the Brady Bunch and I grew up with uh, I, like I Dream Genie and Gilligan's Island shows like that. And so to to see that that show paying homage and to see that you know those creators clearly paying uh, their respects to you know where tv has come from to where it is today i thought was really special yeah so uh just a quick reminder that uh if you are all interested in checking out what if keep in mind that it will be appearing on disney plus on august 11th so with that said i would like to go into the uh, chat wall and I would like to ask you all, how do you feel about the What If trailer that we got? Are you guys hyped up for it? And especially if you are an MCU fan, how do you feel about it? And what are you hoping for um, with this that might make an impact onto the MCU? Let me know what you all think on this. Uh, let's see now. Uh, I'm excited for this series. I really like the art style, and I love that they brought most of the original voice actors back, uh, except for Robert Downey Jr., Chris Ever Evans, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Brie Larson. I can't wait to check this out, and if this is successful, then it could lend itself to other what-if shows from either Disney or Pixar or even Star Wars, which I would totally be down for. Uh, definitely can't wait to watch this. Also, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Well, I don't know about the Disney stuff, but I can honestly see they could probably do one for Star Wars and it could work out, actually. Yeah, I, I agree with what that what that commenter said. I think that's a good idea. Uh, I, you know, with with stuff like uh, the only frame of reference I have for like stories that were told uh, with the Disney characters that I was like, wow, I, I'm really glad they did that was with uh, the Kingdom Hearts video games, you know, just to see these characters again in, 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 a, new, in a different scenario. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think I mean, I, I, I look to you as the expert in the Disney space. But but what I'll say is, you know, as an enthusiast is I think it would be cool to see uh, a, a what if with uh, with other Disney properties, uh, n not only the Marvel ones. Yeah, that is true. I uh, like I can see what you mean, like how it can go onto the Disney stuff. But I was thinking like this what if kind of concept would work more for something that already has this massive um, universe in itself. Like, yeah, it would be fun to see like the little stories from here and there, like a what if for like Frozen or for Winnie the Pooh or Cinderella or whatever. But um, what I'm thinking of is like a what if for Star Wars has a lot of really strong potential, especially if that could actually give out the opportunity to finally actually make some kind of canon thing with the long uh with with those rumors we've been hearing so much about jar jar like you know the ones <laughs> that i'm talking about i am i am familiar with the jar jar rumors 
Yeah, that's that is a great. The internet's a one like can be a scary place, but that's an instance where I think the internet did a wonderful job. Oh yeah, it's been, I've been hearing about those for so long. Like I like I think honestly, this what if idea would actually go and make that can't. Like I think that would be the chance to actually make that happen. But yeah, for me, I feel like it would definitely have a stronger potential if they do so for um for star wars so far for like the animated stuff for like pixar or for disney that that we'll wait and see like if disney ever decides to do something with a full-on cinematic universe like like a crazy idea would be if disney would actually do a cinematic universe based on the movies based on their theme park rides like like some kind of like crossover with like pirates of the caribbean or like with jungle cruise that's coming up then we can have some kind of idea of like what ifs and stuff like that. That could work out. Well, thank you to that commenter because that was a. I think that was a great question and great great insight. Because yeah, it's got it's got me thinking. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, and and, and uh, trust me, like these commenters, like they they can be pretty smart. Like that's what I love with uh, that's what I love about my audience because they they can know like they can really think about like great questions to add on to this. No, you're uh, super lucky. This the the questions have all been great. Thank you so much, audience. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, I won't be watching this series. Uh, ever since uh, Disney bought Marvel, uh, I am fearful of the possibility that Disney will slowly but the but uh, buy the entire entirety of Hollywood, kind of like the Soviet <laughs> movie industry back in the 1930s everything will be disney <laughs> uh, well, let's see i stopped caring about the mcu since the first avengers and even with the single character focused movies being slightly better than the all-out movies i haven't watched any of the mcu related stuff other than the spider-verse movie from sony scorsese's was right that pure cinema is dying Ooh, that is a hot take right there yeah yeah i if I may, I appreciate where that person is coming from. I totally, I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it, it is totally understandable to be, to be, uh, tired of superhero movies, period. I am not, uh, but I understand where people are coming from because I've been there. I think that, you know, these movies are in a post COVID world. I'm just like I am, I'm just excited to to see what creative stuff comes out uh, in in a new, more optimistic way than I was before. So again, like that that makes sense to me, and I and I get where that person's coming from. I think I've been there, uh, but I think you know, having the prompt from you to, that I knew I was going to be on this show talking about this and seeing everything that Marvel's up to, it's hard for me to not get excited about everything that they're doing. And 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 so I I don't know. It's it's a uh, Yes, I, I think it's a it's a very interesting point. Will Dis if you know big companies like Disney become these huge conglomerates that own all the creative properties? Mm -hmm. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, but but hey, I mean, there's been a lot of cool stuff that's come out of Marvel since being acquired by Disney. So I guess we'll have to see. That is true, and like some could even argue that Marvel has been better than ever because of the full on buyout from Disney. So. There is that argument, but then again, yeah, I do understand because sometimes trends can be annoying and sometimes like when they do dominate the entire industry and you see nothing but that, like it can be a little bit repetitive and it can be a bit tiring. Yeah, I, I, but I, but I don't know, like when, when Scorsese said that, I mean, look, I respect Sc Scorsese, but when he, when he said that it, it just got me thinking. And uh, and I don't know if there's a right answer. I respect his opinion. I mean, the man has a ton of experience in the industry, has made some awesome pieces of content, some awesome films. Um, but it started a conversation, and I think it's worth it's one worth having. I, I think it really is something that is worth reflect reflecting upon, like in terms of like what is your definition of cinema? Exactly. That's a that's the that's a great way to put it. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. This trailer looks pretty cool. It has a watcher explaining to us, like, what if one of the MCU heroes turns undead? What if Thor became the god of mischief and went against Asgard? And what if Howard the Duck became one of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Or what if Thanos was after something else other than the Infinity Stones? I'm actually pretty curious to where this is going to go, so I might give this a watch, even though I'm never a fan of animated Marvel shows, but this does actually pique my interest. Well, then again, this is the first time in like a long, long time that we've actually had a legitimate 
Marvel series. I mean, like, yeah, there, there, there have been the stuff that's on like Disney uh, XD and stuff like that, and there are the Spider Man stuff. But this is the first time, like, this is something that is fully connected to the MCU, or this is um, the first time that it does acknowledge the movies in any capacity. So really, like, this is kind of like a new chapter for Marvel Animation in a sense, if they do commit to actually going in this direction. Because uh, if, the, if, the, if if this would actually go and result to a Marvel animated feature, then I would totally be down for it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know, like, this is only 10 or so episodes. I mean, it's a... We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, like I, I, I mean, I, there have been a lot of animated Marvel shows that I, you know, that I think we both probably grew up with, like, um, the, the Spider-Man show in the, in the mid nineties comes to mind with Air, where Aerosmith did the theme song. I personally really liked that one. Um, there was a, a short lived one called spectacular Spider-Man. I'm yes. not sure where it was, but I, did you like that show? Oh my God. I, I, did. I really did. It was I great. Really, I thought it was awesome. You know, like. I, I can understand a critic if, if someone were to say, yeah, but the, the character designs were, were maybe off putting just because they were different. And I don't know. Sure. But the animation's quality, like the fights and the storytelling were so good. And, mm -hmm. and, and I I don't know for me, when it comes to cartoons, it's like those things come before like character design, let's say. But that's just me. Oh, so yeah. I, 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 I really do like the. Um, the animated Marvel stuff that has come out. And like you're saying, it's interesting that this is the first time we're seeing uh, an um, animated Marvel property that that is directly going off of what we've seen from the MCU. So I think it's kind of like a new direction. And, and I'm curious to see what they do. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to read one more comment before we jump into the uh, next story. As an MCU fan, I'm definitely psyched up for this. Uh, the animation has a nice cell-shaded aesthetic to it. There's a lot of creative ideas presented. And has a, and it is bittersweet uh, to hear Chadwick again. The voice acting is top-notch, so uh, it's going to be a must-watch for me. I don't have anything else to add, so here's a spoiler-free spoiler, th a spoiler mini-review of Black Widow. Uh, it's a great movie, but I feel uh, it needed just a smidge more David Harbour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I didn't see that comment going in that direction at all. I I'm a I like David Ar uh, I like him a lot, and I'm excited for that movie. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? No, I know. I really need to get on it. I, I've been. You know what? I'm still catching up on Mandalorian season two. Like I I'm a little behind. Ah, uh, okay. Fair fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, like I've heard great things so far with um uh, with uh with Black Widow. And as for uh, Mandalorian season two, yeah, it. Oh, trust me, it is worth checking out. I am loving it so far. I think I'm midway through episode three, or or I might have finished episode three, but I, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. Oh, it's going to get up from here. That I can guarantee you. It's especially cool to see um, someone I've, I've, I've worked with uh, briefly, um, uh, this actor, Paul Sun Hyung Lee, who's, uh, he plays ca um, uh, an X-Wing pilot. Uh, I think it's either Captain Carson or his character's just named Carson. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I heard about him. Yeah, like I, I remember when uh, season two came out, like um, a lot of the Canadian press like was really freaking out about him appearing in uh, The Mandalorian. So I, I did he's, hear about that. Yeah, he's he's awesome and a really talented actor and a huge Star Wars fan from before. Uh, you know, it's it's the perfect fit. And uh, and I was so excited in episode two to see to to see him in action. You know, it felt felt really cool it's really cool when you get to see someone you know doing something you know they were so excited to do <laughs> you you knew him like uh where, where, where did you meet him yeah so i was uh i was a production assistant on season three of kim's convenience ah. and uh so, so you know i was i was uh helping out in the production office you know getting people coffee driving people around you know stuff like that but i but i got to learn and and see how the how how that show was run and uh, one thing I can say from that experience is that, you know, Paul is an awesome guy. He had no business learning my name, remembering my name. I would never have expected that, you know, because I'm I'm a production assistant. Right. But but man, like I'm a huge fan of him. And uh, it was super cool to see him in The Mandalorian. Ah, Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, with our next trailer that we have here, I am curious to know. I don't think you might have, but. Have you actually seen the 2019 Adams Family movie? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, no, I have not. The it, I I 
Yeah, I think, but I, but I am excited about this trailer. If that's what you're leaning towards. Really, you are okay. I'm curious to know your thoughts on this one, actually, because uh, the next trailer that we do have is that we are going to be looking into the sequel to the 2019 movie. So let's go ahead and check out the Adams Family Two. It's dinner time. Mm. Ah. Dinner time, my favorite nighttime meal. Ah. 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 Why does nobody come in through the front door? Dearest mother and father, we will not be attending this evening's ritual mastication. What? They're both growing up so fast, they wouldn't be caught dead with their parents. <gasps> Wait a minute. What? I've got it, Tish. It's hideous. It's monstrous. It's the old Adam's camper. Time for some family bonding. What? Huh? We are going on a road trip. This is cruel, even for you. Let's roll! We'll bring the Adams closer than ever before. Let's make some memories. It's just us and the wonderful sound of silence. Fire in the hole! Now that's grand. Ah, uh, here he is! The depths of the sea, back to the black Snoop Doggy Dog, don't you get the, 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 the. Good to see you, my bewhiskered cousin. I still don't understand the word that guy say. What is Kitty? He and it hit the catnip pretty hard last night. So that was the Adams Family 2. And uh, Jason, you, you, you said you're hyped up for this? I'm hyped. You know what? Like I'm hyped to hear your take on it because I think that um, I hadn't seen the first one, but I watched uh, some reviews and stuff again because uh, I knew we would be talking about this. And uh, I know that first one wasn't super well received. And, and, and the uh, I thought that hearing about the plot line with, um, you know, that realtor who was going to demolish the Adams family home or whatever or wanted to buy it sounded strange and I was just so curious to hear your take on it, and and maybe if we could get some some of the the uh, some of the audience who's who's who maybe have seen it or have opinions on it. I, I'm just super interested because I because I'm not super familiar with the series. Really, like even in general, like you haven't experienced other Adams Family stuff before. Like a little bit. I mean, it was on. There was a series like on. There was the first series on television that I'd seen some of, and I know there was one at least one iteration on teletoon or something here in canada that i'd seen but i'm not super familiar with the adams family yeah i remember i grew up a little bit with some adams family shows i i remember there was a live action series that was made in the yeah. 90s or something like it, i think it was like on ytv or something like that i could be wrong uh and then i remember watching that animated series that was like on teletoon and stuff like that so like i i remember the adams family like in a few things but the 2019 movie, I honestly did not like because it felt like a very wasted opportunity because, like, you you have, like, a lot of materials with the Adams family themselves as this very macabre family that loves each other, but it's through, like, these, like, highly dangerous and, like, near-death experience and horror-related elements that... You know, it, it, it's something that I'm sure, like, for Halloween fans, they would be more than happy to dig into. But uh, the 2019 movie, yeah, it just feel like, 
they're really wasting that potential for something that's just very much forgettable. It's just there's nothing really about it that kind of stands out. And even the character designs look weird. Like, everybody looks like they're from Big Mouth. Well, except for the Adams Family themselves. So there's just something that, like, it just seems off. It's unpleasant. And it's just really boring. And I think that's really the biggest crime about this, uh, about that movie, is that it really was boring. And right. looking into this, honestly, with um, what they have done with uh, Adam's Family, tr- uh, Adam's Family Two, the fact that like they want to go on a road trip for family bonding, it's honestly something that the more I think about it, the more that I do think, really, that's it. That's the best you got. Because, (laughs) yeah, because I I will give it. I'll say right now that there are times when, okay, they do show some fun ideas from time to time, especially with um, with when Wednesday would play with uh, that Pugsley doll. And like it has that voodoo element where like whatever the doll go, wherever the doll goes or whatever happens to the doll, then the same thing would happen to Pugsley. Like, okay, those those moments, I will admit, some of it is fun. But really, at the end of the day, when you do think about it, it really is just this road trip family movie where the parents want to go and bond with the kids. And honestly, I feel like we've already went through a lot of those already with stuff like uh, a Goofy movie or something like Are We There Yet? Or even just recently with uh, The Mitchells versus The Machines. I was going to say that's the best example, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And that that's the big thing with the Mitchells vs. the Machines, considering that was released this year. And then we got something like um, The Addams Family 2 coming in. It's like, really? You, you, you want to have the balls to come in with that <laughs> plot line when we already got Mitchells vs. the Machines? That, that, that's brave of you, Addams Family. Very brave of you. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the the scoop. Maybe we should be commending them for being for stepping into dangerous territory. Because as you mentioned, you know, I'm I'm also like I'm a big fan of the Goofy movie. It's very nostalgic for me. Um, you know, even in college, like we would be singing the songs from that movie all the time. And uh, and yeah, like more recently with with the Mich- Mitchells versus the Machines. I mean, this this is a tried and true uh, story trope. And uh, I don't know, like again, because I'm not, I didn't see the first one, and and I'm just not. I know it wasn't super well received, so I, I don't know. I'm skeptical about this one. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say the one thing about this is that, I mean, technically we've already went through this discussion with Encanto and stuff like that. But I think my biggest problem with the fact that um, it would have this like typical trope again is the fact that, yeah, it does have the trope. And yet, it doesn't necessarily do anything special with it. Like, with Encanto, yes, we've heard about this, like, non-special person in the special family so many times before. But at least with Encanto, what we saw in the teaser trailer, they are showing us a lot of different elements that would make it unique. That it is going to offer us something that they that no one else has before with that trope of a story. With the Adams Family, though... What is it that's unique that we haven't seen before in something like a Goofy movie or especially in Mitchell's vs. the Machines? Like, yeah, they're promising us, like, a lot of explosions or, like, death-defying waterfalls to jump down, but we've already had that before. Like, that, that again, like, it's just recycling elements from what we have seen previous of times, but they're not doing anything special with it. They're not doing anything really unique. And they think that, like, oh, well, we're the Adams Family. We could, you know, that alone can really make us stand out. But not really, though. Especially not with this interpretation of the Adams Family that's really forgettable. That just feels bland, in a sense. Yeah, because I think that, you know, part of what makes the Adams fan- Family uh, so special is is what you were talking about. That they, they're they bonded by their 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 mutual respect and appreciation of their strangeness as a family. You know, they, what they love is the opposite of what, what, you know, like it's almost like they should be villains, but they're not Mm -hmm. evil. Like they, like they're, they're the horror movie tropes as the protagonists of their story. And I feel like, yeah, like watching, um, watching, you know, that scene that you, you referenced where, uh, you know, like that jumping off of a, of a, um, of a waterfall or, you know, the explosions in the Grand Canyon scene from the trailer. I think, you know, that in my mind, like that's like you could do that in any in, in other properties. I mean, that's that's not 
exactly what I would expect from the Adams family because that's not what I think makes them special. But again, I have not seen it. I'm just speaking from the trailer. <laughs> But honestly, what you just described there, you nailed it perfectly because that is legit what the Adams Family is all about. That really is the heart of the Adams Family and what makes it such an iconic franchise is the fact that you have this family that loves each other and are bonded by their strangeness and how they're pretty much the opposite of what people would perceive as normal. And like in the and in the first movie, what failed is that, yeah, like they have that, you know, they kind of have that as a theme, but they don't explore the concept as much as they should, especially the fact that this is animation. You think that this is a medium that they could go above and beyond that, but not really, because the things that they would try to go above and beyond are things that they've recycled from everyone else. And really, there's not much that we've seen that, like, really makes it unique or fun or want to make us experience. Like, with the Niagara Falls scene where they go down the waterfall and stuff, how is that any different than what we've experienced with a Goofy movie? Or, like, with the explosions in the Grand Canyon, how is that any different than, like, what we have seen with uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines when they would have all the explosions during the road trip? There's just, like, again... It, it, it fails to answer the question, why should I care about watching this uh, when I have plenty of other options to watch instead? Like, how can this movie stand out other than the fact that it's the Adams Family? Exactly. In a way, it feels like it's this could be any other movie, but they just called it, they like wrote this other movie and then said, and it's Adams Family. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm open to be wrong. I mean, there is that possibility that the sequel will come out and it could turn out to be better than I thought. I mean, that was actually my experience with uh, the Boss Baby family business. Like, honestly, I was ready to hate that movie, but it honestly <laughs> turned out better than I thought. It, I'm not saying it's good, but it actually was... Uh, you know, honestly, I liked it a lot better than I did with the first movie. Like, I hated the first, but the second... Like... It was insane. It like it it was like a roller coaster where after the movie was done it was like I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that though, I felt like there there was some heart, there was some effort into it and the animation was definitely fantastic where like yeah, they went all out with it, but there were also times when they went all out with it in a really good way. And I am open to the possibility maybe that could also happen with the Adams family where maybe they're hiding some of the best surprises for the movie itself. But I will say in terms of the trailer that we do have, I feel a little bit iffy on. That's the one thing I feel a little bit like, yeah, this is not really doing its job in order to sell me to watch this movie. Have Has it done, it, done that for you? No, I completely agree with you, to be honest. I think that the trailer uh, didn't get me super excited, but I was excited to talk to you about it. <laughs> okay, that, that was the one thing, honestly, I was curious about, like, when we started talking about it, it was like, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely excited. It was like, wait, what? You're excited for the yeah, Adam family? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, honestly, though, overall, since I'm not like, I'm not a fan of the uh, first movie and this has done nothing so far in order to sell me on the second movie. Like, um, the, the most that I've had, like, a lot of fun with, honestly, the most that I've done that actually is fun is just, um, I actually did change my profile picture on social media where I took a cousin in and I pretty much, uh, uh, adapt, like, pretty much changed it up to make it look a little bit more like me where it was just cousin it and he had a fedora on. I decided to change it where he has the orange fedora on. So it was yeah, like, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> on, it's your Instagram profile picture right now, I think. Yes, it is. Like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I decided to change it up because like, eh, why not? It's been a while. Like, why not just have fun with it and just make a cousin it version of me? Because admittedly, oh, yeah. admittedly, out of all the Adams Family characters, I always loved cousin it. Yeah, I think the I think the idea is very, very silly and fun. And I think that's an example of how the Adams Family can stand out, how that world is very appealing. Exactly. But nowadays, oh, and also, I um, like, 
I did forget to mention this because some people are mentioning it on the chat wall, but it is, there is one thing I will say that is unintentionally funny in a way. And that is the fact that since it is one of those like bland animated features that's trying to copy everyone else, there's also the factor that they would add pop music into it. And I will admit I did like the first time I saw this trailer, I did unintentionally laugh where they decide to mix the Addams family theme with riding dirty. (laughs) (laughs) That is one of those things that I feel like is kind of unexpected. It's like, okay, out of all the things that I would expect from this movie, from this trailer, I wasn't expecting writing dirty to suddenly come in. Yeah, I think I think we're all with you there. <laughs> oh yeah, like yeah, the the one perfect soundtrack for the Adams family, freaking writing dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it, it's kind of like oh actually there like I, I need to tell you about this one thing that i did unintentionally laugh uh in the first movie because um if, if you don't know cousin it is actually voiced by snoop dogg which is why you actually oh, yeah. yeah which is why you hear in the soundtrack <laughs> about like snoop dogg when you see uh a cousin it in a jet ski his introduction in the first movie when he gets out in the car is uh drop they play drop it like it's hot and okay, perfect. They they played a bit of a censored version, but one thing that I found so hilarious was the fact that they legit bleeped out uh, the word weed in the song. Because, like, you know, at the end, it's like, because I got the best weed, because I got it going on. They literally just, like, silenced that part. And it was just so obvious. It's like, because I got the best that I got it going on. <laughs> it was like, Wait, they played, like, a radio edit in the in the film yes like a full that on, seems like a strange choice yeah it was a legit like full-on radio edit where they silence out the like what i find to be funny is that they like yeah they played a more censored version that's more family friendly to play it safe on the radio but what i find funny is the fact that they legit like completely opt out the word weed out of all the words and drop it like it's hot they got to take out weed into yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from the whole thing and it's like so obvious and replaced it with nothing you think that's what i that's the part that i find the most strange like you would think that oh why what since they have snoop dogg for the movie uh wouldn't it be neat if they had done a, a cover or something and made it kind of you know about what was going on in the film for example i, I mean that seems like a good opportunity for a joke yeah, that is true. And I mean like with the sound yeah, like with the soundtrack and stuff like that, you'd think Snoop Dogg would like come in to like contribute something onto it. I mean, he already did that with the third SpongeBob movie, I believe. So uh, like I'm I'm surprised they didn't even go in that direction to help like do a Snoop Dogg version of the Adams family theme or some or like even do like a cousin it theme somewhat, you know, like make a song based on cousin it. But no, yeah, but, again, I think that's just a great opportunity for jokes. I think you're right on the money. Yeah, it would have been a perfect opportunity, but no, they decided let's like let's take popular Snoop Dogg songs and just randomly censor them and we'll put that on our kids movie. Yeah, that that'll <laughs> definitely work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you can pretty much tell how the, like this move, how the first movie and maybe this one is just like wasted opportunity. So honestly, I'm not all that excited for it. All right. So um, with that said, I think it's time I'll go into the chat wall and I would like to ask you guys, how do you feel about uh, the Adams family too? How do you feel about this trailer uh are you guys excited for it are you more um optimistic about it than us or are you a lot more doubtful about it let me know what you think on this uh let's see even though uh my only exposure to the adams family is the 1992 cartoon i'm not really feeling for this movie the voodoo doll is kind of fun but for the most part most of the trailer is either boring or just plain stupid like how they got how they got freaking hip-hop music i I feel like I'm going to skip this like the first movie. Uh, You know what would redeem this movie, though? Let the Adams Family go to Florida. The chaos that could ensue from there would be legendary. Oh, my God. (laughs) The Adams Family family meets Florida, man. Yeah, that that will be fascinating. (laughs) (laughs) The the Adams Family meets Sunblock. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that is true. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. 
Um, okay. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Adams Family, and I haven't seen the first film. With the sequel, I don't have any interest. It just feels like a combination of a goofy movie and Hotel Transylvania 3. Uh, it just feels absolutely cliched, and Ben does, uh, Ben, uh, Ben done over the, uh, Ben, oh, Ben done, up. Uh, Bent done over and over again. Oh, it has been done over and over again. Okay, so I'm not interested. Also, I'm going to be. It's going to be interested. It's going to be interesting. What is going to be the superior film? Uh, considering the Adams Family Two is coming out at the exact same day as the final Hotel Transylvania film, Hotel Transylvania Transformania. Uh, and yeah, I think the comment just stops from there. So yeah, that that is true. So. It will be an interesting pick to see what audiences will go for because these are like two pretty successful franchises in a way. Like you got like one sequel and then another and they're both themed to Halloween. So it'll be fascinating to see which movie audiences are going to go and see. So the, the first Adams Family did well at the box office then? Yes, actually. Uh, surprisingly enough, yes, because it is a relative like it's mainly because it is a relatively low budgeted animated feature, but it, it still made a lot of money at the box office and it still ended up ma like even though the number itself is not as big, uh, it was still a lot more successful than most animated features that was released during that year. So that's why they immediately jumped onto the sequel. And that's another thing that is actually kind of concerning is the fact that you got to keep in mind, the last movie was in 2019. Now they are going to go and do a sequel two years later. So I I'm just wondering, uh, were they working on this movie while they were doing the first movie? Or did they decide to immediately jump onto the second film after the first one? Because if this is just like a less than two year production, ugh, that's not usually a good sign right there. It's interesting. And 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 uh, how do you feel about the Hotel Transylvania series? Not a fan, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I'm more in the mi I'm in the minority. I will admit, but uh, it really is like they they are pretty much the same like Adam Sandler type movies, but now as a car as a family friendly cartoon. So I'm just not really like yeah. There are a few moments of the first film that are funny. I will admit, but. For the most part, they're really not that different from like what we've seen like with the Adams family or even like with the with the kinds of films that like really want to be hip and trendy, kind of like with Alvin and the Chipmunks or the Smurfs. That that that's my opinion on, on those films and honestly, the one thing I am excited with the fourth movie is that it will be the last one, so it is a promise. But then again, it's not even good <laughs> enough to get Adam Sandler back, so I don't know what that means. Interesting. Uh, interesting all right let's see what else we got i agree that the plot of the sequel does seem a bit tiresome uh it especially doesn't help when we already seen a recent animated movie about a road trip uh the choice of soundtrack for this trailer is also bizarre to say the least but didn't Hanna barbera also make an adam family cartoon once about them going on a road trip before in the 70s i <laughs> highly doubt that this movie is supposed to be based on the obscure uh Hanna barbera cartoon I think, uh, well, yeah, okay, yeah, it is true that Hanna-Barbera did make a series on it, but, um, uh, like, I wouldn't say that it was entirely based on going on a road trip. I think it's, like, maybe there was an episode or two that they went on a road trip. That would definitely be believable, but, uh, yeah, I don't, like, I don't think, like, this movie in particular is based on that one Hanna-Barbera yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, let's see. Even with my backstory regarding the Adams, for context, I was uh, a makeup artist on the production of the uh, musical, or at least for a, a production of it. Uh, this looks really lame. The plot looks as unoriginal as it gets. Pugly, uh, Pugly's uh, recast is ridiculously obvious, and the jokes are pretty mediocre. And I'll say it again, they really missed out on making an adaptation of the musical. But even then, I don't think uh, the... The, ba the Banks uh, would translate well onto this film's art style. Yeah, that is true also, considering that um, they did switch actors for Pugsley. Um, oh, crap, I forgot his name, honestly. But I remember it was that one kid from Stranger Things. Uh, that oh, he... yeah, it's Finn Wolfhard. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, Finn Wolfhard. He was the original actor for Pugsley in the first, but now they ended up uh, switching out and got... 
a brand new actor, which is kind of a surprising, uh, sw- yeah, which was a surprising switch considering that, I mean, technically in the first movie, like he, he doesn't, it's not like he sounded like a kid. Like he, like Finn was obviously going through puberty and he sounded like a teenager. I don't know if nowadays he sounds a lot more different than he did back then, but still, like, that was one that I felt like it was a bit strange, especially when they still kept uh, Chloe Grace Moretz to play as uh, Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, who knows, right? Like, I think it's tough. Look, I'm a good example of that, right? Like, when, when people's voices change, they sometimes get recast, even if the character doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, in this case, I'm not sure if it was it was needed, but hey, I mean, it was prob- it was the production people had to make a decision, and uh, and they made it. Yeah, that is true. It's it's their choice. And yeah, especially the fact that you are a perfect example of that, considering that like you you know, you were you were voicing a kid character and then suddenly suddenly puberty hit you and then you gotta be recasted. Thankfully it happened. I was a late bloomer, so I got to play the role for a little bit longer. Which oh. was nice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, I'll read one more comment before we move on to the finale. Uh, Like Jason said, uh, since he never seen the first movie in 2019, uh, I also never saw the 2019 movie either. But I'm not sure if I want to see this film since the 2019 film is is, uh, the most wasted animated film alongside Arctic Dogs and Ugly Dolls. So I'm kind of mixed about this. And I actually remember they have uh, a camping trailer in the 1960s, Oh, a camping trailer in the 1960s animated series. And Matt, if you have a profile picture of Cousin It wearing a fedora, are you good at making a Cousin It impression? Well, I mean, uh, it depends on which Cousin It that you're talking about. But uh, especially, like, with this one, it's ju- it literally is just Snoop Dogg speaking backwards and, like, really putting up the pitch. But... Then again, like, yeah, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So maybe a little bit. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, wow, I, 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 do, okay. I do work on the impressions, but yeah. So yeah, I, I can play the part. And there there was a time like when my, when my hair can be much larger than this. So there was a moment like when, when I would go underwater and like I would resurface, I could definitely look the part as well. <laughs> Well, whoever's making this fa- this this uh, this Adams Family series of movies, I mean, someone call Matt. He's he's ready. If, <laughs> yeah, if you're uh, if you ever wants a break. Yeah, if you're ever doing an animated series based on um, like if you want to do an animated series based on this Adams Family, I'll definitely be open to play as cousin it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think with that said, it's time that we go into the grand finale. And just before we started this, uh, this was admittedly a bit of a last-minute addition, but honestly, this was a trailer that, like, I have to talk about in this. It really is something that I think more people should be aware of. Like, you, you, you know which one I'm talking about, right? Yes, sir. All right, so... I believe with that said and done, uh, this is actually a trailer that, uh, by the way, this is going to be from a filmmaker that maybe you have heard of called Ari Fullman. And Ari Fullman, previously he worked on a movie that I absolutely adore, which is Waltz with Bashir. But now he is coming back and he has returned to the Cannes Film Festival where he has a brand new animated feature, which it is called... Where is Anne Frank? So let's go and check this trailer out. What are you waiting for, Anne? Open your presents. Oh, that's so lovely. When you write, who do you actually write to? To myself, of course. I prefer to think of my diary as a girl. A best friend. Her name will be Kitty. Kitty? Hmm. I like it. Come down, Anne. I'm waiting for you. Is he a boy from class? Of course. Who are you talking to, Anne? Up until a year ago, everyone was in love with me. Everyone? It was all so wonderful. Then everything changed. We're leaving. They told everyone we were to blame for all the world's problems. This secret apartment is going to be our hiding place. For every person we welcome is a good chance we are saving a life. You could use those characters in your head. Make them fight.
fight your war somehow. This young lady here named Kitty is looking for Anne Frank. Have you seen her? Anne did not write this diary so that you could worship her. What is important... Get in the truck. Do everything you can to save one single soul from harm. Just one soul. What do you see, Peter? I see the Allied forces. They're coming to liberate us. And you? I see angels, Peter. And that is Where is Anne Frank, which is so far going to be making its premiere at the Cannes uh, Film Festival. So, uh, Jason, I would like to know your thoughts on this. Uh, how, how did you feel when watching this? I, I think it's a really special and important um, story in general uh, at the Anne Frank, you know, her her life story and that her diary exists. And I, 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 I think that the way that this story is being told again for a, a new generation is both seems interesting from, you know, uh, the perspective of just general entertainment, uh, you know, the way that um, the, the way that they present her uh, Anne Frank's life and, uh, you know, bringing Kitty, the, the fictional character that she was writing to in the diary to life, uh, I think was a really interesting take on the story. And uh, also how they don't shy away from, you know, the, the horrors that, that took place during World War II and, uh, the way the dichotomy between, uh, you know, making this a children's story, but also not shying away from those elements. I, I, I think it overall seems like a, a fantastic um, film that I'm excited to see. And B, I think, you know, in, in these, you know, challenging times, uh, I think it's an important story to tell. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the one thing I will say that I was surprised about, but I'm so glad that they decided to go and really dive deep into this because this isn't just like a biography of Anne Frank and telling her story, uh, but also um, this, I would say that the best way to describe it is that it's not about Anne Frank, but rather about the diary that Anne Frank wrote on where they're kind of bringing that diary to life in the form of this character named uh, Kitty. And not only are they showing like how uh, this diary affected uh, uh, Anne's life, but also showing the like how it impacted our society afterwards. Like what is the big social impact uh, regarding this diary and like the influence that Kitty has in today's times, even seeing uh, some modern problems as well, especially with the uh, the police arresting that uh, African American family. So that is going to be very fascinating to see to not just tackle on the issues of back then, but even tackling on the issues now and um, getting all this from the perspective of the diary that is brought to life with this very fascinating story. And I feel like more than ever, the, the, the story of Anne Frank really is one that should be reminded again and again because nowadays like yeah we have heard about Anne Frank and we have heard about the diary and stuff but we don't know the full story like not many people are really familiar with like what happened during that time and the importance of this diary uh to tell the story and to give us uh, a Jewish perspective of World War II so that's the one thing that I I'm very excited to see on this yeah, I agree. I think I agree with everything you just said. Mm -hmm. And also, I got to say, like, one thing that I do have to applaud also, the animation is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that's the that's the part that really, you know, I'm even looking at um, when I was uh, I, I saw the trailer and then I was so curious. I had to read up on the film and and seeing, you know, just seeing like single cells from or, or single like um, like single images from uh, you know, the trailer. I mean, you can really see that, like the the beauty and the color. It, it reminds me a lot of like of old Disney in terms of just like the color palette they've chosen. Yes. And, and the clear, careful attention they've given to it, like in Snow White or in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that is true, actually, because like there is that, um, you know, there is like that classic 
style to it where it feels like um the old like it, it is kind of like you're transported to that time and artistically there is that sense as well like um like just a just, just a quick reminder that like yeah this is this is more like a hand drawn yeah this is more like of a fully hand drawn film where we and honestly it's it's honestly surprising to see um like this style going from uh like what Ari Fulman used to do in um uh, in uh in waltz with bashir and then going into this have you seen waltz with bashir by the way i haven't and i would like to see it i i'm not familiar oh you should it's a beautiful film but with this animation though it's like wow like the the like i'll even admit the the animation really took a massive upgrade and it looks beautiful like people like people are demanding they want to see hand drawn come back well yeah like it yeah it's back right here and it's absolutely amazing and especially the the style is just fluid the designs uh, it's a very like it has that distinct look that is very reminiscent to um how it was back then like the, the like the animation style or the designs and the aesthetics of like the 1940s like it, right. it, it really is a gorgeous looking animated feature and really uses hand drawn to its advantage so that's that's also another thing that i'm excited to see from this not only the story of anne frank uh, being told to a new generation but the animation is just fantastic this is this is so far beautiful hand drawn. I'll give it that. Has um as a side note, is Ari Folman uh, a French filmmaker? No. Um yeah, because I have seen a lot of people meant questioning about like why is this uh, French? No, but th th this is this is because um like I said before, this is premiering in cons. So right. this is like pulling out from like what people are seeing in the cons film festival. That's why we're Got seeing it. all the French stuff. No, mm -hmm. he's, um, I, for, I, I forgot specifically where he's from, but he's more in the middle East. Mm -hmm. he, he, yeah. So like, I think he's from Israel, if I remember, or somewhere around those lines. So, uh, mm -hmm. it, it just so happens that because like he's from, Con well, because the movie is premiering in cons, that's why we are in a way getting a French trailer so that we can have a glimpse of what this movie looks like. But overall though, oh my God, like I'm probably as hyped up for this as I am with Encanto. This is a beautiful looking feature film. I don't know when it's going to make its like public premiere, but um, I would definitely be down to see this. It's a great looking feature and it tells a very important story with Anne Frank. And I definitely trust Ari Fulman will be as uh, respectable and faithful to, uh, to the story of Anne Frank and her diary. And like also taking the art, like the artistic liberties that he is taking with bringing this character Kitty to life you know, yeah. I, I think it adds that extra layer, especially if he's going to go and add that commentary onto modern social issues as well. And um, the approach of Anne Frank's diary that it would take. So honestly, I'm very much excited for this one. Yeah, it's a really original take on a, on an important story. And I, and I think that that's a that's just a recipe for success in my mind. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, and someone did confirm that yes, Ari Fulman is from Israel. Thank you for uh, for confirming that, Master My uh, Master uh, Masterminder nineteen. Yes, uh, yeah, and and normally those would be those would be things that like would be a very tricky rope to uh, to try to like walk across. That that would be something that would be considered very dangerous because like one wrong step and you're pretty much screwed to the point of like ruining your whole career. But the way that they are presenting it so far in this um, in this movie, I think honestly would actually work out very well, and in a way that again seems very respectable to the story of Anne Frank and the legacy that this diary has. Wait, so, sorry, just to clarify, you mean that like taking taking creative liberties with that story, and if that was done incorrectly would make it seem like not tasteful and like bad yeah is that what you mean yeah that's what i mean exactly okay yeah yeah sorry i i didn't understand i thank you for oh, clarifying. So, yeah, sorry that, about I agree. that 
no, 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 it's on me. I think I it's totally on me. <laughs> yeah, but overall, honestly, I'm hyped up for it. It looks beautiful. And I can't wait to see this come to the public, like one way or another. Like, uh, like since th this is more of an independent film, I'm hoping like G Kid, like a company like G Kids, can immediately go and like pick this up so that we could see this in the public because this needs to be seen all across. Especially, I mean, like you, like animation fans, you guys want hand drawn back. Like as I said before. This is hand drawn, so eat up. Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, I, I keep seeing uh, I, I, I keep seeing on social media a lot of people are like, "Bring back 2D. We need more hand drawn." And it was like, "It's right here." Is that, like you, you see this? This this is hand drawn. This, this is the hand drawn you're looking for. So come, come and take it. You want hand drawn back? It's back. It's right here. It's Anne Frank. And Frank is delivering your hand drawn, so take it. <laughs> yeah, it's important and it looks good. Exactly. Like it's the best of both worlds. Exactly. A beautiful combination right there. Yeah. All right. All right. So with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall and I would like to ask you all, how do you feel about the trailer of Where Is Anne Frank? Are you guys impressed by it? Are you not as impressed as much as us? Let me know what you all think on this. All right, let's see now. The movie reminds me of the 1995 version by Studio Madhouse, but also delves on the similarities between the horrors of World War II and the difficulties of our society. Animation is, sun is stunning, character designs are beautiful, and the music might be superior uh, superb. I'm down with that one. Shalom to the director. All right, that is nice. Uh, let's see. The, uh, the animation competition is getting really interesting and pretty intense this year, especially after what we've already got with stuff like Mitchells and Raya and upcoming films like Encanto and Vivo. Seeing this trailer in the mix makes it even more interesting since this looks amazing with the animation and the story. Haven't seen Waltz with Bashir, but I will, re uh, I will really soon. Now I have access online uh, from the UNCG library and that I'm still go going to. Hope, uh, hope it looked great even if it ever comes out this year. Yeah, that is um, that that is also another thing that we would have to consider, considering it is an indie film. We don't know, like, if it does come to someplace like North America, we don't know if it would actually be, like, this year in 2021. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, maybe in 2022 they'll suddenly bring this up over here. Mm -hmm. So there is right. that chance. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, this is the second animated adaptation of Anne Frank. The first was an anime in 1990. Oh my god, this is both surreal and pretty. I feel like I'll both cry and feel warm, uh, but I could use Anne moving to Florida uh, and training uh, an alligator. Reference to anime... Uh, to Don Bluth. <laughs> Anyways, uh, maybe this will tell the people uh, who compare wearing masks and getting vaccinated as being treated like Holocaust victims. No, they aren't Holocaust victims. They don't have a choice. Anti-vaxxers and, and, and anti-maskers do. Yeah, that, that is also another thing like to bring up, especially like to mention about the Holocaust and present how it is a serious factor, considering there are those people that want to make crazy hyperboles and want to compare their situation to the Holocaust or what happened to the Jews. And that's what we've seen in recent years. Like, recently where you've seen some people they want to compare to their plight with wearing masks and stuff like that or their like first world problems to being a jew in the holocaust and that that's never a cool thing to do so at least we can have a visual representation or something to remind us that like no world war ii is no joking matter and like whatever you're dealing with nowadays it ain't even a quarter as bad as what the jews went through during that time yeah, I think that, you know, that's that's another reason why that uh, this story needs to be retold, because I think that as we get further and further away from the events that happened during World War Two and the Holocaust, you know, the generation that survived it, you know, like my grandparents, for example, uh, who lived on to, you know, tell my father and then to tell me, I, I, I think that, you know, the, that as that generation passes on, it's up to us to you know, to to remind the world that, hey, this happened and like, let's never let hate win. You know, th this story, you know, there's 
there's more, you know, not just persecution against Jewish people, but against all more xenophobia out there than there ever has been in my lifetime that, that I've ever been aware of. And, you know, with with neo-Nazis being a, a real thing in North America, I think, you know, it's important to to tell people and to tell kids, honestly, from an early age, like, hey, this happened and love each other. You know, the world is a big neighborhood. Be good to each other because we don't have that much time on this earth. Right. So uh, it all I, I, again, it all that's that's it, that's why it's so important that this movie looks so appealing while its message is also extremely important. Uh, hopefully, you know, kids will get as excited about it. And as uh, the uh, article in Deadline said, you know, if if the target demographic for this movie um, gets excited about this this movie, then I think it'll be a good day for humanity. Oh, absolutely. Like, it serves as a good reminder to remind us to learn the lessons from history, that these moments have happened and that we need to learn from them to make sure that the horrific events don't happen again. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we got. I love movies revolving around history, so I'll be I'll be really interested in seeing this. The animation looks beautiful, and the story seems very interesting, so I will definitely be checking this out. Uh, my only question is, where, uh, where is this going to be released? Is it going to be in theaters, or is it going to be in streaming? And if so, which streaming service? That we don't know. Again, it's only starting to be released in the Cannes Film Festival. And you never know, maybe you'll have a company like G-Kids releasing it uh, limitedly in theaters. Or maybe you'll have Netflix suddenly popping in and um, they'll just put it out like just to for people to check out on a streaming service. Kind of like what they did with uh, a- another indie film called I Lost My Body. Like, that's another one that they did. So that that is also another possibility. So I'm thinking either G-Kids or Netflix would go and pick it up. Uh, and I'll read uh, one more comment. So this seems to be a pretty fascinating... Uh, this seems to be pretty fascinating from what we got so far. The animation looks amazing and design-wise. It's quite unique. The themes they present are solid, especially with how they compare the horrible things that happened several years ago to nowadays, where these issues are still happening to this day. And how this movie is about both Anne Frank and her diary is pretty interesting. So I'll watch it when it comes out. Definitely. The more people who see this, the better. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And with that said, I think this should conclude this episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. Jason, thank you so much for joining this. It has been an absolute blast having you in this podcast and to talk about your podcast as well with uh, Finding DW. Well, thanks so much for having me. I mean, as I said off the top, I think I think what you've going got going on here was really, really special. And I loved what I saw. And I'm so happy someone from your community uh, shared uh, an article about me. And that's how I, you know, that's how I discovered your show and, and everything you're up to. And so I, you know, my hat's off to your community and everything you've built. Uh, I, I think it was special. And I hope, you know, if you like what Matt does, I, I hope you'll you'll check out what I'm doing, too, because because I think, you know, you guys are awesome. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing I would like to know. And before we go. Uh, is, uh, where can we find you on the internet? If you have any social medias that you would like to promote, or if um, if you just want to go and promote Finding DW, where can we go and find that? Yeah, so um, the, the main thing that I would love people to do is check out Finding DW wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or, or you know, ev- anywhere really. Um, and also, uh, if you want to see, you know, some behind the scenes stuff and, uh, learn a, a little bit more about me, uh, I, I'd love it if you'd come follow me on Instagram. It's just my name, uh, Jason Schwimmer. Schwimmer is spelled S Z W I M E R. All right. So I think with all that said though, again, Jason, thank you so much for watching me and thank you all so much for listening and to watch this episode. Tune in next week where we will have more fun filled uh, stories and trailers to go and check out. And with all that said and done, see you later dudes. See ya. Thanks again.